Yo, it's your boy Logos, and today I want to react to this very short clip from Thomas Sal's YouTube channel called This Is Why The Love Hates The Face Facts. I'm curious to see if you're talking about economics, race, gender, or any other other nonsense we hear them debating over the past few years. Let's get into it. But how does raising taxes on corporations lower the cost of gas, the cost of a used car, the cost of food for everyday Americans? So look, I think we encourage those who have done very well, right? Especially those who care about climate change uh, to support a fair ta tax code that doesn't change, that doesn't charge manufacturers, workers, cops, builders, a higher percentage of their earnings, that the most fortunate people in our nation and not let this, this, that stand in the way of reducing energy costs and fighting this ex existential problem, if you think about that as an example, and to support basic collective bargaining rights as well, right? That's also important. But look, it is, you know, by not, if, without having a fair tax code, which is what I'm talking about, then all, every, like manufacturing workers, cops, you know, it's not fair for them to have to pay higher taxes than the folks that who are who are who are not paying taxes at all discrimination and disparities much of the social retrogression that took place is traceable to the central tenet of the prevailing social vision that unequal outcomes are due to adverse treatment of the less fortunate yeah okay so grant that argument that they're not paying attention they're not they're not squaring up, attempting to square up intentions with what emerges. Yeah. But here's the bit that's still baffling to me. You mentioned the Moynihan report where uh, his, his central finding was, again, the breaking down of the black family mm -hmm. and the out mm -hmm. of wedlock birth rate then was 25%. Now it's over 70%. By the yeah. way, it's over 30% among whites now. Yes. That was more than 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. A half century of failing to to try to align intentions with results what is this willfully why is it that we still have this prevailing social vision that seems not only not to ask what are the results are our fine intentions actually achieving the ends we wish for but almost refuses to look at the massive evidence to the contrary that was kind of <clears throat> I could finally jump in somewhere because in my opinion the white house press secretary is like the whole white house in and of itself they seem very incompetent but that's not surprising considering we have joe biden as president if you have the top person incompetent so of course everybody else below him probably gonna be too sometimes you have cases where previous better governments still have some people from the previous cabinet so they can guide a person in a better way but I haven't seen anything much to let me think that way about Joe Biden and his administration in terms of what they've about to go into. Part of me wanting to say it's just willful ignorance and they're so high and mighty. They don't care about statistics. They don't care about the history. They don't care about all the stuff that be proven. And so if you can see now in terms of the effects of social welfare and breaking down of black families. But other part of me wants to say it's it's almost malicious because we see the data, we see the effects of it. You can't keep saying this racism over and over and over again, when during racism at its strongest in civil rights era, Jim Crow era, before then, black families were stronger. We didn't have out of red lot children as much. We didn't have single parent homes as much. Where we had more stress and more social pressures from people like racism and discrimination, we stuck together. I don't understand why now when we have less BS to deal with, but we choose to separate and pull each other apart. It's not just with families. It's with everything. Even if two parents do separate, oftentimes nowadays, because they didn't have a good situation or relationship beforehand, those parents fight, argue. Sometimes the father or the mother don't let each other see custody or see their children and somebody still have to pay child support. Part of the reason why we have what we have is social welfare and fathers not being in the home. The government incentivized that. I don't think everything is about racism or discrimination or slavery or Jim Crow from 50 or 200 years ago. I'm not one of those people, one of those black people always put the stuff on the government. I think we need to look at ourselves and what we're doing. We're making these choices to have teen mothers 
increased over the past 50 years. We're making these choices to have out of wedlock um, babies, not having marriage, being so open and flamboyant about sets in our music and our community, allowing gangs to take over and preventing black businesses to grow and thrive within black neighborhoods. But then at the same time, we want to talk about gentrification. You can't get mad at white people for moving into neighborhoods, buying property, and building it up. We need to do that ourselves. Stop. Just stop making excuses for the same stuff we see happening decade after decade after decade. That's my issue. There's no reason why I should be at this age talking about this stuff now when this stuff was going on 50 something years ago or 40 something years ago. Like during the crack epidemic, we had so much stuff going on and we saw the negative effects of the stuff we were doing in terms of drugs and gang culture. But still 40 years later, 30 years later, look at the music that's most popular in the black community. Look at some of the aspirations our children want to do. They want to be rappers. They want to be Instagram models. They want to be Instagram famous. It's just nonsense we perpetuate in our community. And in my opinion, I think it's much more better to go after that stuff than go after the government all the time. Productive. So what's going on? Partly what's going on among professional politicians is that it can be the end of a whole career to admit that you were wrong. Imagine you're president <laughs> and you send men into battle in a war and they get wiped out and you say, you know, we really didn't have to fight that war. Uh, <laughs> that, that is not something you're going to say. It's something you're not likely to say to yourself. There'll be a thousand rationalizations and the ability of the human mind to rationalize is just phenomenal. What he said is very, very true because we live in democracy. If you want to get reelected, you have to be competent. Okay. Let me take that back because clearly look at who we have in office now in terms of the White House and Congress. You don't have to be competent, but you just don't have to outwardly show incompetence so clearly what people wouldn't vote for you. And you admit into a mistake from 30 years ago that affected generations and generations of people, especially a minority who has a history already being discriminated against. Of course, you're not going to do that because I'm going to throw your whole career away. And these people care more about their career and getting their money out of their career and actually doing their job, which is to help the American people, the same people they vote for. And I think Thomas Sowell is absolutely right about that. And what he said is very, very true because if you look at war too, when we go into places like Iraq, Vietnam, excuse me, Afghanistan, when we pull out and it's not successful, there's so much heat and backlash on those presidents or the Congress or any people who supported that. And it's not just an American thing, that's a history thing. In Roman times, it's hard to pull your front line or your surrounding territory, your frontier back because you sacrifice tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of soldiers defending that piece of territory for generations or sometimes even recently. And even those families back then would give politicians hell in Rome if they want to pull back their lines on the frontier because they can't defend it. They don't care if you can't defend it. They care if the fact that their son was in the Roman army, went out there with your emperor or your general, fought and killed and died on that field to get that land for the empire. And you're going to pull back from it as if his sacrifice meant nothing to you. That's the issue. And people care more about votes than doing what's right. And I understand that mother and that family in that situation, but I also understand the politician in that situation. A politician isn't interested in doing what's right for the country. They're more interested about staying in office and getting more money on the side through insider trading and the military industrial complex. And in my opinion, they co-opted the media. They co-opted every single part of an organization in this country that could affect elections. Look at Matt Taibbi, where he's talking about now with the Twitter files, how the government worked with social media companies to censor people about the vaccine, COVID and other things. And you, if you think they're not doing that now, just do a quick search. There's a reason why I, I use stuff like DuckDuckGo. I think DuckDuckGo, that's his name. DuckDuckGo instead of Google for my searches because Google does censor your searches. I started using Brave now because that's a little bit better now than DuckDuckGo. But my point is, people don't like facts nowadays. They like your feelings and they'll say anything at all to get your votes, get your money, and get you to be on their side. But that's just my opinion. It's your boy Logos, and I'll talk to y'all next time.